Hey friends, we're outside again today because like I have mentioned before for some of my outside videos, I do have somebody that sleeps during the day, works night shifts. So right now I'm outside. I've got kind of a crazy setup because um, it's kind of breezy and things are blowing around. So let me, let me try and show you this, this setup. Let's see if I can turn it the other way. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I've got my notes here, you know, um, and I have a Christmas tree up on my porch. So anyway, you guys, this is just the setup. I always want to make sure that every statistic I give you is 100% to the best of my ability accurate. I don't try to memorize it. When it comes to those stats and numbers, I'm going to make sure that I bullet statements to let you know what those things are. All right, so September is worldwide Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. And I don't know if childhood cancer has affected you personally or if somebody you know, a family member you know, um, but the awareness ribbon that you'll see for childhood cancer awareness is going to be yellow or gold, orangey, those sorts of colors, and blue. But gold is the main color for the ribbon. So the recognition is to increase awareness, give education on early treatment, when to go to the doctor. I'll go over symptoms and things like that. This isn't gonna be long. I just, you know, early treatment for cancer uh, or for detection and then treatment is just really critical, even for children. Um, so we'll go over some of those main uh, symptoms that you're gonna see in children because waiting long till you get to the doctor, until you get treatment, uh, decreases the survival rate for most cancers. Raising awareness and raising funds, getting money together so that it'll go towards uh, research and towards treatment uh, is something that's an ongoing um, thing that we want to do so that, you know, everybody knows about the pink ribbon and raising awareness in October for breast cancer. We, I, but I just don't think there's enough of it going around for children. Let me give you some statistics that I'm going to read that are accurate as of today for childhood cancer. Let's talk about some of the numbers. According to the National Cancer Institute, approximately 15,000 children and adolescents ages zero to 19 are diagnosed with cancer each year in the United States. And of those, approximately 1,600 will die. So when why it says birth to 19 is because yes, children can be born with cancer. There's such a thing called um, retinoblastoma, it affects their eyes. There's also uh, different types of leukemia and different other types of cancer that are a little more rare, but it can happen. It can happen at any time of a child's life, including birth. I'm gonna put a picture up of what retinoblastoma looks like because you may have heard stories about people who see it when they're taking pictures of their newborn or their toddler and they see this particular white pupil or flash of white instead of a black pupil or both pupils are flashing white. That is a sign that you need to have this child checked out. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's cancer, but it is one of the things that is a symptom uh, to be aware of. What causes pediatric cancer? It is like all cancers. It's a um, DNA modification. It's a mutation. It's a change that occurs in the DNA where cells then uh, don't behave themselves. And it's nobody's fault. Kids are not out smoking and trying to increase lung cancer. These sorts of unfortunate events happen. Globally, there are 300,000 children that are diagnosed with cancer every year. So that's around the globe. And I think what I read, I'll get it um, up here, the accurate exact place geographically, but it is in Africa. And why would that be? It just has to do with uh, lack of resources, uh, lack of education, uh, inability to get proper treatment. Uh, so there's a lot of different reasons. Children are still getting cancer, but surviving cancer has increased dramatically. Thank, thank God for that, because, you know, you hear about St. Jude and you see kids, um, you hear stories about my brother, my sister, oh, my mom had a brother. You know, back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, you know, kids did not survive most of the cancers, but now kids are, most kids are surviving. What happens after five years, there's always going to be secondary complications from the treatments that they had. It might be something minor, it might be something that gives them a different type of cancer. The main types of childhood cancer are leukemia, brain cancer, and lymphoma. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about symptoms. Um, wow, there could be a lot of different things going on, but you're the parent and if you see something that is unusual, something that really concerns you, have your child checked out. 
Um, but a lot of the symptoms are what a lot of adults experience. So if there's night sweats, um, lymph nodes that are enlarged here, lymph nodes here, lymph nodes under the arm and the groin, places that are kind of unusual or a lymph node here that becomes enlarged and does not go down. The child has is maybe uh, really fatigued, very lethargic, um, inability to really concentrate. How about kids who have brain tumors? So the symptoms there might be something like um, unsteady gait, walking uh, difficulties, uh, tripping, falling down a lot, bruising a lot, bruising easily, double vision, um, seizures, and vomiting. And not because I got kind of a GI bug, but does this is this projectile vomiting? Did you see your child go down with a seizure and some vomiting? These are just some really important symptoms to bring up with your provider. Go into the ER. It's always okay to go into the ER or go into urgent care and explain that these symptoms are happening and that you're really nervous about it and you would like things to get checked out. A couple other symptoms too to look out for, and I said tripping. It doesn't necessarily mean brain tumor, therefore that's going to affect the walk, the gait, the tripping. It also could be um, bone cancer. So bone cancer in the leg, a lot of pain in a specific place in the leg, uh, inability to walk without a limp. Those are some other symptoms that could be going on. And when I talked about retinoblastoma, how about the pupils, you know, being white? Yes, but what about bulging in the eyes, an eye that become that is bulging, or frequent headaches? Okay, so the treatments. Um, there are some amazing treatments that are going on right now for cancer for adults and children that is so promising. You've probably heard about it. CAR T cell therapy, which is a type of immunotherapy, uh, having amazing results for, like I said, adults and children for different types of cancers. And there's also the usual treatments like radiation, chemotherapy, uh, surgery, and uh, targeted therapy. With the CAR T cell therapy, it's, I just find it to be such an exciting thing. So you're going to have, in a nutshell, your T cells removed a certain amount and sent off to a lab. And this lab is going to genetically uh, modify those T cells so that they then get sent back to you and you're going to get an infusion of your T cells but this time your T cells have become really smart and think of it like goggles have been put on and they are able to go in there and see where these cancer cells are and and destroy them target them and destroy them so that's just it in a nutshell but it's a really I mean T cells are taken they go to a lab they're modified to be better they come back they go into you and that is one of your treatments with, uh, often with chemotherapy, before, after, at the same time, and that enhances your chances of survival, and that also is what's enhancing the cancer um, cells to not reproduce and to put you in what people often have called remission, but it's really called no evidence of disease. I'm going to list a lot of really interesting um, and exciting things about CAR T cell therapy down below. Uh, a lot of different resources uh, about childhood cancer. And I hope this was helpful. I really appreciate each and every one of you that takes the time to listen to this, to give it a thumbs up, send it to somebody that you know that might benefit from this. And sometimes people don't know there's some different therapies out there and some people don't know what the symptoms are. And that's okay. That's why education is powerful, isn't it? And I want to do my part and spread education about childhood cancer, about symptoms, early treatment, getting to the doctor, uh, maybe some questions to ask about different therapies for your child or for your loved one and how we can help other people. Any little thing helps a family when they're experiencing someone with cancer in their life, particularly a child. Um, helping them with a meal, helping them with a chore, helping with their other children. Anything you do is going to help because every single thing for these treatments is going to take time, energy, money out of that family. And we all can do our part and help. I wanted to mention too, back to CAR T cell therapy, the from start to finish time frame varies um, from, uh, depending on what the cancer is and how the, how the patient does, but um, I believe it's approximately a few months. So Thank you for listening. Please share, please subscribe. I, I'm trying hard to get this information out there. And if you have any, um, you know, any thoughts on a topic that you would like some information on, please feel free to put it below. I've done sneezing, I've done, um, I'm doing a book review, I've done why I became a nurse, and a couple other things that have been requests from other people. Thank you and have a good evening.